Coeur d'Alene Public Schools will not move to all in-person learning, at least for now. This comes after board members heard COVID-19 data statistics from Idaho health experts. And thankfully, our air quality is now good, and we're tracking good air throughout the work week as we've got rain on the way by midweek. I'll have your forecast. But I got to tell you, um, we're ready. We're ready. After many setbacks and delays, the Mead School District finally has their first day of school. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us here. I'm Regina on Whitney is off tonight. Welcome, everyone. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Given what we've heard today in the data, I'd have a hard time full heartedly saying five days a week starting next Monday. Coeur d'Alene Public Schools will not be changing to all in-person classes just yet. In a special meeting today, board members met with the Panhandle Health District and Kootenai Health to discuss COVID-19 data. Our Morgan Trow has more information on what that means for you and your family. Ask if there's a motion to change category. Okay, there is no motion. The special board meeting was supposed to be quick and easy, as members said they had an idea of what their position would be. This sucks. Let me just say that. I'm just going to put on the radio. This sucks. Having to decide the fate of over 11,000 students, their families, and their teachers is not a task to take lightly, which is why board members and health experts spent over an hour going over the latest COVID-19 data. Kootenai Health says that COVID cases in the county are increasing and have been steadily for the past couple of weeks. So reevaluating school phases might be a good idea. Right now, Coeur d'Alene schools are operating in the orange mode, which is a hybrid of virtual and in-person learning. I may be the only one who'd be comfortable with moving to yellow today, um, and, and I understand reluctance to not do so. The reluctance came from the other four board members. Moving to yellow mode would mean every student would be in person at school and there would be no social distancing guidelines. Um, but, but I too came in here thinking uh, yellow and now I'm not 100% I'm not sure that we should be doing that given our, our uptick uh, and that we're trending up. So. A clear turning point in the conversation was when Kootenai Health gave a coronavirus update. We have had one more um, yeah, patient admission for COVID today since we got on the phone, so now we're at 21. That was Morgan Trow reporting. The school superintendent says the update makes the decision harder and ask for some patience going forward. The board agrees to be more transparent about their plans for the schools this year, as many parents have voiced concerns about feeling left in the dark about their child's schedule. And this morning marked the official start of the school year for Mead students. Students were supposed to head back last Monday, but that was delayed because of poor air conditions. Mead's reopening plan varies depending on grade levels. First off, families were given the option to do online learning if they wanted to. Over a quarter of the kids at Evergreen are doing just that. District-wide students in kindergarten through fifth grade are learning in person every day. But middle and high school students are using a hybrid model going to school on some days and learning from home on others to accommodate social distancing. It's different. It's overwhelming. It's given us an opportunity to, to kind of focus on, on what it really means to be a family and, and how we take care of each other. Um, but at the same time, we're, we're eager to get them out of the house for a minute. <laughs> And the district says it's still addressing what the impacts will be regarding classes being canceled last week. New at 5 tonight, a Washington State Superior Court judge ruled in favor of Planned Parenthood by granting a preliminary injunction against an anti-abortion group. Legal Voice brought a suit against the church at Planned Parenthood in June on behalf of Planned Parenthood of Greater Washington and North Idaho. Planned Parenthood claims the church at Planned Parenthood, the word's kind of confusing there, they claim their loud demonstrations outside their facilities are interfering with patient care and violate state and local laws against excessive noise outside of health care facilities. Also new at 5 tonight, deputies say an off-duty detective with the Spokane County Sheriff's Office stopped a robbery. It happened at a Spokane T-Mobile store on Sunday afternoon. Investigators say an employee noticed the suspect, 29-year-old Cyrus Quarles, trying to cut a security peg to remove a pair of headphones from the rack. That's when another employee confronted the suspect and told him to stop. And that's when police say Quarles turned the knife toward the worker and told him to back off. At that point, the detective, Detective Humphrey, who again was off duty at the time, pulled out his gun and told Quarles to drop the knife, which he did. Detective Humphrey says, or held rather, the suspect at gunpoint until police arrived and arrested him. 
the men and women that work in Spokane County and the city of Spokane, the men and women officers, they would have done exactly the same thing that I would have done in that circumstance. You know, we all are very hardworking. We all put our lives on the line every day. And, you know, I, I just happen to be there. But I guarantee every single one of our officers would have done exactly the same thing. The suspect, Quarles, was taken into custody and booked into Spokane County Jail for first-degree commercial robbery. Nobody was hurt. T-Mobile employees told our crews they can't talk about what happened per the company's corporate media policy. Regional Health District is apologizing today after accidentally disclosing personal health information to a partner agency. Yeah, that's right, Regina. Some of the disclosed information included COVID-19 test results and hospitalization status. Recipients of the private information included school administrations and nursing staff. Unfortunately, the wrong Excel spreadsheet was sent out. It was, however, um, retracted within 30 minutes. Only a few people apparently opened it and we were contacted and that's how we found out about it. Dr. Lutz adds that the health district has already implemented additional security measures such as password protections to prevent another accidental disclosure. All right, let's talk weather now. The smoke finally cleared over the weekend. Our air quality now in the good category. The last day of summer turned out to be quite nice, didn't it, Tom? It sure did, and I love how you stole my thunder there. <laughs> so nice to take a deep breath. The air quality, as you mentioned, is good. The AQI air quality index now stands at 40. Keep in mind, it was just a week ago. We were in the 400s as we were breathing basically poison, hazardous air. So now we're in the good air quality range, and I think it's going to remain that way because we've got a Another weather system headed our way by Wednesday. In the meantime, enjoy this beautiful last day of summer, 74 degrees. We love when the wind is blowing out of the east northeast when we have wildfire smoke because it's blowing that smoke away from us. Once again, we'll look for another beautiful day tomorrow on the first day of fall and a daytime high of 75. Showers developing on Wednesday, continuing through Saturday and cooler too. We'll look for highs uh, only in the mid 60s Saturday and then another beautiful fall day to enjoy joy on Sunday, mostly dry and high of 74. I'll check the rest of the seven day outlook coming up in a few minutes. Sounds good, Tom. Thank you very much. Residents of Malden and Pine City continue to clear away the rubble left by that devastating fire two weeks ago. While the cause of the fire is still under investigation, a Vista conducted its own investigation. It says a tree limb hitting a power line is the suspected cause. Regardless, the damage left by the fire doesn't make things any easier for people who lost their homes. A lot of memories in it, a lot of keepsakes that used to be pictures and just all gone. A community meeting with updates on the recovery effort is scheduled this Wednesday at 11 a.m. outside the temporary Malden City Hall. Cram 2's Amanda Rowley will have more on this story coming up new at 6 tonight. This week, unemployed workers in Washington will see a little boost. Starting today, an extra $300 will be sent out. It's a retroactive payment. It applies to people who were unemployed between August 1st and September 5th. So here's how you know if you're eligible for that. So you're unemployed or working fewer hours due to disruptions from the COVID-19 pandemic. And Washington's Employment Security Department paid you unemployment benefits for the approved weeks of the program. Federal funds must still be available for you and the money will be available as soon as banks process payments from ESD. So for more information, you can text the word money to 509-448-2000 and we'll send you a link with more information. Well, the White House is reviewing Seattle's federal funding after violent protests plagued the city for weeks in May and June. And the Justice Department named Seattle, Portland and New York City as three cities at risk of losing some federal funding. It was after President Trump signed a memo directing Attorney General William Barr to identify jurisdictions that, quote, have permitted violence and destruction of property to persist, end quote. Seattle was singled out for allowing the CHOP district to set up in the Capitol Hill neighborhood and the Justice Department is considering adding more cities to that list.